once again at the core of the unit here 160 degrees Celsius thereabouts 161 I think it's about maximum is about 160 degrees but you can't put your hand too close to it it would melt these gloves actually so yeah you wouldn't need to run this I don't think that anything like that if you were just trying to heat up with say a, a trailer tent on this video we're going to be looking at another diesel heater made by H Calori from China this time it's the TB25 it's a portable lightweight 8 kilowatt model aimed more at glamping camping and one of those little camper pods I'll just mention that if you're looking for a larger heater maybe a more permanent solution something that could heat a workshop or a shed you might be interested in the previous model that I reviewed and I'll leave a link to that video in the description I also noticed that the version I was sent here has now been upgraded with a much more sophisticated remote control unit which now has a built-in CO sensor. I've only got the basic one with this unit. Anyway, enough talking. Let's have a quick look what we get in the box and then we can get outside and set this heater up. The heater does come in rather a large box. I was a little bit shocked, but mostly it's just packaging. It's a comprehensive owner's book. You're going to need to read this for safety instructions, of course. Let's have a quick look at the box of tricks. We do get an exhaust silencer, same as the previous unit. And then the exhaust pipe itself, yeah, it's a flexible pipe. Rather good that you do get supplied a fitting kit here. There's the outlet nozzle valve if you wanted to fit this permanently, the flexible outlet tube and also the flexible inlet tube for the air intake. You do get a bag of fittings, a bit like before, the large Jubilee clips are absolutely fine, but the smaller ones, if you're gonna fit this permanently, I think you would probably do better to upgrade these and buy better ones yourself. No complaints though on the exhaust mounting brackets. These are very nice quality. The air filter, again, there's no foam insert. It's just a plastic can. It does come with an extendable wire loom here. This is for the control unit, one and a half meters. So you can set up the control unit away from the heater. As I chose the UK version, we get a very nice PSU unit and nice to see a proper UK plug with a fuse. For portable use, you do get a 12 or 24 volt wiring loom. It does initially need 12 amps for the start procedure, and then it settles down to about two to three amps. Worth noting though, there is no inline fuse in this lead. Quick look at the control panel. It does come attached to the unit, but this is removable and extended via that extension loom. It's fairly easy to use, but the buttons are multifunctional. It's worth noting that the exhaust pipe is very long. It's also very flexible. You just simply bend it into the shape that you want. The heat outward pipe is also expandable. It can be bent into any shape. Just have to go a little careful though because it is a little bit flimsy. Compared to the all metal version I tested before, I was really pleasantly surprised how light this unit is. Weighed in at just under six kilos. So very easy to move about quick look inside the case then the big black thing in the middle that is the diesel heat exchanger and I did wonder where the remote control was and it was just attached here you can just make it out now this is the basic remote control as I mentioned they have upgraded this to a co2 sensor a much more complicated remote control and here's the fuse I said the inline cable didn't have a fuse well it's inside it's a car blade fuse and then finally running across the top is the fuel tank a good size for a portable heater six liters they reckon roughly you'll use about three and a half liters for a night's use along with the control panel and the basic remote control you can operate the heater via a bluetooth app on your phone the instructions how to download this are in the owner's manual i did use this on the previous test and found it quite an intuitive little app to use very useful for setting uh, for example program times where you can arrange for the heater to come on in your absence right that's all that boring stuff out of the way let's get the thing started obviously a diesel heater it runs on standard diesel fuel it'll also run on red diesel personally 
I like to run these on kerosene. Why? Well, kerosene is a much finer refined fuel and it burns a lot cleaner. You get less fumes. However, if you do run it on kerosene, they do recommend that you do add some diesel every fourth or fifth tank to lubricate the fuel pump. Being an intelligent heater, when you first press the power switch, it will check the amount of DC volts being supplied and also whether there's enough amps to initiate the start process. Once that checks out, you then hold down the button for a further two seconds to actually start the heater. Now the startup process varies depending on the ambient temperature. This was a very wet and cold day in the UK, about 10 or 11 degrees C. So it did take approximately three or four minutes to start up. Now there are two different ways you can control the heater. You can use the thermostat built into the control panel and just use it like you would your normal household heating. You set the temperature and then the heater will switch itself on and off and try and maintain that temperature. Now obviously I'm using this outdoors on a cold day so there's not much point in doing that. So we have a more basic setting where you simply just turn up the fan. Now this is quite good because the old model I tested before only went up to 6 but now this has been increased to a maximum setting of 10. I'm going to stop talking now and let you listen to the startup and heater in operation. The heater I previously tested, the larger heater, was very noisy when it started up with plenty of clicks. This one is a lot quieter. See what you think. Now I've got this running at full power and I can tell you this is putting out a serious amount of heat. Also, unlike the previous um, heater we had from high calorie, there's no ticking noise on the igniter. This one is a lot more silent. We're just going to put the meter on it. As you can see, ambient temperature 14 degrees out here. This is kicking out heat now. Look at that. On the core there, we're looking at 154. And um, this is full power, but y y you can't put your hand too close to it. Obviously, you might lose a little bit with the induction pipe, but not a lot. But that is a serious amount of heat now coming out of this. So moving around to the back of the unit, all you can really hear is the air intake. It's exceptionally quiet. It's trying to regulate a 70 degree temperature, of course. You can see my breath. It's only about 10 or 12 degrees out here, so it won't be able to do that. It's, it's shot up there. It's a bit unfair, really. We should have it in the manual mode. But that is maximum power. Very, very quiet. Impressed with this one. We can just, obviously, adjust the power output. Again, that is flat out on maximum. Once again, at the core of the unit here, 160 degrees Celsius, thereabouts. 161, I think it's about maximum, it's about 160 degrees, but you can't put your hand too close to it. It would melt these gloves, actually. So yeah, you wouldn't need to run this, I don't think, that anything like that if you were just trying to heat up with, say, a, a trailer tent. But overall, I'm going to say I'm quite impressed. Very, very quiet. Yeah, this one is going to be a keeper. And there you go then, that's the H Calorie TB25 8kW 
portable heater. I think you can tell I was suitably impressed with this one. So much quieter than the previous model. As it was such a god awful day here in the UK, I didn't get round to testing the phone app. If you want to see that in more detail, just watch the previous video. I'll leave a link in the description. This diesel heater was sent in from Banggood, so thanks to them. There is a unique link in the description and also a discount code. I can save you a little bit at the checkout. Sorry, it's not available in every country. Also, look out for Banggood deals because quite often these things are discounted anyway. That's it. That's the end of the video. Hope it was interesting to you. And as always, please, please, please look after each other. Stay safe. Yeah, catch you on the next one. Fred's in the shed Where the magic gun falls Fred in the shed With his trusty CB He's a friend to the lonely On a frequency